What is up, YouTube? I'm Devon DaVinci, leader of the Renaissance Crew, and you're watching DaVinci Reacts. Today, we're going to be getting into a type of video that it, the reason why I chose it is because one, you can learn from it, and two, it's a wholesome video. Uh, this video was uploaded by a channel called, I believe, Casual Geographic. Um, in the past, they were named Hood Nature. They started off on TikTok. We're doing a lot of videos uh, related to like animal facts or just animal trivia. And do a little bit of splashy humor in there every once in a while. It's, it's, it's a very good channel and I have seen a number of their videos, but ever since they came over to YouTube, I haven't reacted to anything they've done. Um, it looks like they have taken some of the stuff that's on uh, TikTok and put them into like a bit of a compilation because, you know, TikTok is pretty much like what Vine was back in the day where you only had like so much time to, to, to make your videos. Um, so you had to like cram as much information and talk as fast as you could. So this is going to be interesting because it's going to be a compilation of his TikToks where a lot of information is going to be thrown at you very fast. Um, but the way he does it, definitely a fan. So if you are unfamiliar with the channel, I will have a link for their channel at the end of this video. The last 30 seconds, you'll see an icon pop up. If you click on it, it'll take you to their channel. You can like, comment, subscribe, watch all the other good stuff. And it will have a link for the original video in the description box down below. So if you do want to watch uh, the rest of uh, casual geographics content, then, or if you want to watch this video by itself, the, the, the channel icon is where you go for the rest of the content. <laughs> the link in the description box will take you to the original video in the event that you happen to be a reactor or you want to watch it without me possibly pausing or whatever else that is the link you use. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump into this. animal group names that make me believe there is good in the world. A group of wild rabbits is scientifically called a fluffle and I don't care what toxic masculinity says, if I think something's cute, I'm gonna call it cute and this is freaking adorable. A group of ferrets is called a business which means I can finally use this picture without it being out of context. A group of vultures is awake and I can't tell if this is a coincidence or a sick joke. A group of porcupines <laughs> is a prickle. A prickle of porcupines. A group of sloths is referred to as a snuggle. I don't know what they pay the naming guy but it's not enough. Gang I mean, they are snuggling so the name's appropriate. Is called a paddle. Also plurals, platypuses, platypi for fake intellectuals, and platy people are for anyone of culture. A group of <laughs> kittens is a kindle. A group of crows is called a murder. Oh, jeez. A group of ravens is an unkindness. Google it if you don't believe me. That is why crows are the best. They're called mur- like, I've already said before, if I were to get a pet, and if I ever get a pet bird, it would definitely be either a raven or a crow. Preferably a raven because they're bigger, but- Crows as well. Now, I know that they're very smart animals, so you have to really, when you have a pet that's like really smart, you have to like know how to take care of it because if you don't, it will try to get the hell away from you or it will find a way to have fun, usually at your expense. So it's something you have to really like be aware of. Like that's, why they say that like octopuses, for example, or octopi or whatever the plural for octopus is, whatever, like they're so smart that they will try to escape at like constantly they'll try to escape. So it's not even recommended to get them as pets because of how smart they are. I would imagine ravens and crows could be somewhat similar, but I think I'm a pretty good owner. I, I, I think we'd have some fun together. Let me know how wrong I am for those of you out there that have pet crows or pet ravens. Gathering of larks is called an exaltation. We started off strong, but now y'all just saying shit. Group of rattlesnakes is called a room, but okay, we're back on track. Group <laughs> of parrots is called a pandemonium, and considering how mean these feather bastards can be, I agree. Last, the process of an alpaca giving birth is called an unpacking. If that doesn't bring light to your soul, you probably <laughs> don't have one. Follow me on Instagram, please. Well, group names that bring light to an otherwise dark reality. A group of pandas is called an embarrassment, and you know what? They sure are. That's messed up. Is known as a Congress. <laughs> I would make a government joke, but it probably wouldn't accomplish anything. A group yeah. of pugs is called a grumble, and you know what? If my skull looked like that, I'd be mad too. Multiple narwhals in one place is scientific. It's interesting he's talked about that because I believe aren't pugs? They've been bred to such an extent that like focuses on cuteness or whatever the hell else it is that it's actually caused like deformities with the dog. Like the dog has trouble breathing. Um because of the way its face is structured and stuff. And there's like a lot of dogs that have just naturally built deformities because of breeding. Like some dogs, like they 
can't move certain ways and they are constantly in pain and things like that because of the way they've been bred all for the sake of making them look cute. I think it was dachshunds that uh, are another like deformed dog that is kind of paying for its cuteness at like a cost. <laughs> It's called a grumble, and you know what? If my skull looked like that, I'd be mad too. Multiple narwhals in one place is scientifically called a blessing. A group of zebras is known as a dazzle. A group of alligators is called a congregation. I would make a priest joke, but only the kids would get it. I'd just be asking again. <laughs> group of squirrels I get the joke. Scurry. Group of apes is a shrewdness. And since humans are apes, Damn. connect the dots. Group of hippos is a blow. I'm not for body shaming, but this malicious tub of lard deserves it. Bunch of jellyfish is That's a why they kill people. Group of rhinos Because you call them stuff like that. Group of pigeons is a fuck. Steak. That's not a fact, it's just a personal preference. A group of kangaroos <laughs> is a mob, and that is one godfather of a roid rabbit. A group of hyenas is a cackle. Maybe something like this. Whoever came up with these names got paid to get drunk on the job. A group of badgers is called a set, which makes sense because this bush ferret is 100% affiliated. Animal yeah. baby names that make me think all is right with the world. A baby platypus is called a puggle. A baby echidna is also called a puggle. A little porcupine is scientifically known as a porcupet. A baby coyote is called a whelp, which is the same sound the father coyote makes when he realizes he got one of his side chicks pregnant and has zero intentions of being a present. <laughs> a baby puffin is known as a puffling, and that just feels right. A pangolin fresh out the womb is identified as a panga pup. An infant hedgehog Aww. is called a hoglet. You can't tell, but I am smiling on the inside. A baby seahorse is called a fry, which makes sense because sometimes the father eats them. A baby koala came from wombat, Tasmanian devil, and everything. I know male uh, seahorses, like, technically give birth to... Um... Uh, babies because like the mom will put the eggs inside the little pouch uh, part of the male seahorse and then when the babies are ready to come out he'll just like shoot them out like fucking like like he's a, a I was about to say human but like he's a living nerf gun but he just like spews them out <laughs> it's crazy which makes sense because sometimes the father eats them I didn't know he ate them though Koala, kangaroo, wombat, Tasmanian devil and every other marsupial joey. is known as a joey a baby manatee is scientifically known as a man mini. No need to Google it because I hunt man and mini. Just make that up. A baby rabbit is actually a kid. Like a and tongue twister. A rabbit giving birth is a kindling. I genuinely hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. If I can't make you love sharks in 60 seconds, you have every right to unfollow me. <laughs> Lemon sharks will form emotional attachments with humans and even get overprotective when they see their favorite diver giving attention to another shark. Wow. Yeah, they get jealous. There's a Florida lemon shark named Blondie that'll swim up to people so they can pet him like the 8 foot 200 pound sea puppy he is. Speaking mm. of which, a baby shark is called a pup and I dare you to try to lie to me and tell me this teething shark pup didn't make you smile. I'm trying to hide it, but I see it. Mm. The smallest shark in the world is a dwarf lantern shark that never gets any bigger than 8 inches. There's a joke in there somewhere and I'm not going to make it. They eat krill and like their name suggests, they can glow in the dark. Sharks are intelligent enough to be trained like dogs. Gray bamboo sharks in Germany were taught to push their snout to the correct shape shown on the screen to earn food. They were also trained hmm. to navigate through a maze by recognizing certain shapes and colors on the wall. Sharks in the UK were trained to roll over and beg for food. Sharks have designated best friends. If you rub a shark's belly or turn it upside down, it goes into a trance called tonic immobility that can last as long as 15 minutes. It can also be <laughs> triggered by rubbing its snout. I think that they, um, their snouts and stuff are real sensitive. I heard people say, like, when you're getting attacked by a shark, you're supposed to punch them in the nose. Um, I'd imagine, and I know how stupid this sounds, I'm about to say, but in the event that, like, let's say you can dodge that first hit, if you were to get with it, like, near its stomach and start rubbing it, would that soothe it in some way? Or would it still just be, like, hell-bent on killing you? It's called tonic immobility that can last as long as 15 minutes. It can also be triggered by rubbing its snout. A fact here, I just think this is cute. If I can't make you like spiders by the end oh, of the hell. video, feel free to unfollow me. I'm sorry. I have a slight bit of arachnophobia. Not in an extreme sense, but I've already talked about it. Like, it's not spiders that, that spook me. It's certain spiders' faces. Like, jumping spiders or the ogre spider. Spider. When you have like close ups and they have those big ass eyes, it, it freaks me out for a minute. Like just for a, for just for a second, I was just like, mm. and then I, I mean, after that, I'm good. But it, it always spooks the hell out of me. I don't know why. I don't know where the hell it came from. It just randomly just happened one day, and that's just what it is. <laughs> there ain't no questioning it, talking about it. That's just something that has been going on with me since I'd say about middle school. Don't know why. Some tarantulas will adopt a pet humming dog frog and protect them from predators, and in exchange, the frog eats the insects that will eat the spider's eggs. Yeah. The frog gets a bodyguard, and the spider gets a tiny god frog for her children. 
I think I seen something like this on a a Tier Zoo video. They had one about uh, animal duos or something, and this was one of them with the frog and the spider, because the frog, like you said, will protect the spider's eggs and stuff like that, and the spider will protect the frog from predators. They use chemicals to recognize them, so the spider will grab the frog, examine it, and then release it when they realize this frog is friend, not food. The Patu de Gua is one of the smallest spiders in the world, and I defy you to tell me this isn't cute. Jumping spiders are so small that yeah. a pair of the This is the stuff that kind of freaks me out. Head and have a photo shoot with them. Even though I know jumping spiders are cool, like, jumping spiders are, if you're going to have a spider in your vicinity, <laughs> a jumping spider will probably be the best one because they don't really mess with you all that much like if they do crawl on you that's all they're doing uh like even if you like put your finger in their face they won't like attack it or anything they'll just like either jump on it or just like try to touch it so they're really nice spiders it's just they just got the short end of the stick when it came to those eyes <laughs> and here's what that photo shoot looked like mm. yeah that if there were no spiders in the world you would either starve to death or go broke feeding your family I'm sorry, I've paused a lot. I've started to get kind of over it ever since I started watching a YouTube channel by the name of uh, Exotic Layers. It's this guy, he has like all these spiders and he like has these feeding videos where he'll feed spiders uh, insects. And watching those has helped me overcome some of that arachnophobia, but it's still slightly there. My response ain't as bad as what it would have been. Like you would have visibly seen me like jerk in the past. I guess it ain't getting me as much now because it's expect it he's talking about spider so i know it's coming but if it was just like a video and then just like spider i, I would i would jump spiders eat 400 to 800 million insects that would destroy crops so not only would there be less food it would be much more expensive without spiders a four for four would be a four for 40. Yeah. some spiders raise their arms and pretend to be ants out of the 43,000 types of spiders less than one tenth of a percent are dangerous to people they have tiny paws called tarsuses used to grip surfaces i repeat spiders have tiny paws if you like spiders a little more after this video, you can thank me by following me on Instagram. Real quick, I want to shout out the sponsors for today's video, Dragon Mania Legends. Basically, you raise the ads and in. then you run fades with them. 100% animal abuse and trafficking in real life, but this isn't real life. It's a game and it's a pretty good one. <laughs> the link to this game is going to be in the description. Let's be real. That's what Pokemon is, too. Animals. Yo, so I learned something yesterday and I need y'all to see this. Mountain gorillas will pound on their own chest whenever they perceive a threat or danger in order to seem more intimidating. And it took 23 trips around the sun for me to find out they do not sound the way you would think. Mm. Yeah, it's like coconuts. <laughs> the bitch don't cheer. I'm trying to be intimidating. This is now my favorite thing ever. You see that bitch in the juicy spandex taking pictures of me when I was trying to be intimidating? The densest fur of any land mammal and with 20,000 hairs per square inch, most fleas that get into their fur end up suffocating. They hate water because their fur is so dense that they can freeze to death or grow fungus before they dry. So they take the world's cutest dust bath. <laughs> their closest relative is a sensei bunny, aka the mountain vistaxi. Sensei bunny. Chillers are almost 100% odor. Why hasn't that been anthropomorphized into some type of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles character. His name is the Sensei Bunny. It's it's right there. Everything is just like perfect. What was the name of that one rabbit that was from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? The Ninja? Uh, Wanana Jimbo or whatever the hell. I, like, I'm, I, I don't know his name, but y'all know what I'm talking about. Like, man, give him a sidekick. The Sensei Bunny. Or, or a master. The Sensei Bunny. Perfect. They might have already done it. I don't know. But it, I... Since I haven't heard of it, I would imagine that it hasn't happened, but but odorless to the point where their little chinchilla farts don't smell at all. Every chinchilla hundred percent odorless. Traced back to eleven founding chinchilla fathers that came to the U.S. in 1923. Eleven mm. chinchillas quickly became thousands, and they may not be yeast, but they're sure as hell inbred. It's so bad that chinchilla siblings have to be separated after eight weeks because they will family therapy each other. Chinchillas mm. have hops. Some can leap up to six feet in height, so if your chinchilla is able to clear your Tinder date, just know somebody's lying. They scream, and they're smart enough to understand that screaming will cause their owner to rush over to them, so they will scream to get their attention. And because they're nocturnal, you can expect to hear this at two in the a.m. <laughs> yeah they i've heard that cats also have uh evolved to like meow not because it they need to meow or anything but because they know that by meowing they can get something out of humans so like they do it because they know that we 
like hearing that and will give them attention for making that noise. That's what I heard. That's the healthcare system hates because it's free serotonin. Millions of trees are planted a year by squirrels that bury their nuts and then forget where they hide them. A study showed that gray squirrels will forget 74% of the acorns they bury, causing more unaccounted for nuts than an NBA player with a latex allergy. The short attention span creates homes for thousands of animals. If you fall asleep around an elephant and it gently touches you with its trunk, it's because it thinks you're injured and it's worried about you. One woman fell asleep against a tree, and when she woke up, there was an elephant standing over her, and when more arrived, they gently placed branches over her motionless body to protect her. They've also Aww. been known to rush to people that were swimming because they thought they were drowning. Dogs do that, too. If you've ever seen those videos, people like jumping into swimming pools and the dog just like panics and just like flies in and just jumps and like grabs them by the shirt or something and just like pulls them back to the shore or to the, the side of the pool. Dogs are amazing. Orcas are basically the bullies of the ocean, but if Disney taught me anything, there's always one person that'll stand up to a bully. Humpback whales have been known to protect smaller defenseless animals like seals by placing them on their chest where killer whales can't reach them. Other than pure kindness, we don't know why they do this. And it's not just seals. A humpback whale once protected Spider warning. From Thanks for the warning. Tiger shark. Thanks for the warning. Spiders will pluck a tune on their web in order to bag a female who is attracted by the vibrations. They've also been known to give their mates back rubs. To be mm. fair, if he doesn't, there's a good chance she'll eat him. But yeah, animals I would pet with zero hesitation, despite the severe bodily harm they would certainly cause me. I'm 100% aware of the carnage hippos are capable of. That being said, put a baby hippo in front of me, and I'll be petting it with zero regard for my well-being. Yeah, I must say, baby hippo. Yeah, they're they're still like teething. They don't have the teeth in yet, so you might be able to get away with a few pets. At over 100 pounds, a baby hippo could probably take my arm, but if God gave me two arms with one opportunity to give a baby hippo affection, I will happily roll those dice. I really shouldn't be saying that, but I am not strong enough emotionally to say no to a face like that. Hyenas are one of the most vicious animals in Africa, and I know for a fact I have a problem because even though I've seen them play Operation with a living baby zebra, my brain processes this picture and just sees a very seasoned puppy. The hyenas are different. The hyenas, I would not pet under any circumstance. I've watched uh, The Lion Whisperer. Uh, I think his name is Kevin Richardson. He takes care of animals in this little sanctuary. He has lions, he has hyenas, he has panthers. Hyenas, even with him, someone who has raised them and they've imprinted on him and like have in, like included him into their like group, they will still fuck him up if he steps too far out of line or does something that they don't really consider to be normal. So even in that regards, someone that has spent their entire life with them, hyenas will mess you up. And not to mention, I've heard that hyenas smell bad to all hell because of the way they eat and like how their bodies are kind of built to be not just hunters, but also scavengers. They, their bodies have evolved to be able to digest stuff that let's say have gone past the expiration date. So they will eat a lot of things that will rot over like really quickly. Not to mention they have like meat and stuff in their mouth and teeth that obviously don't have toothbrush. So it's going to rot in their mouth and they tend to roll around in all types of stuff. And it's not the most pleasant smell from what I heard. A homicidal puppy, but a puppy nonetheless. I envy the man that hangs with hyenas for fun because I would gladly give my left leg to Kevin Richardson. The problem is with a thousand pound bite force, they would take it with or without my consent. I don't know if this is sacrilegious, but I would embrace the devil with open arms if I ever got the opportunity. Okay, now you're asking to die. <laughs> to of a chainsaw on the diet of a land vulture. I've stand this animal for a majority of my childhood, so at the risk of my face becoming the devil's true toy, I'm holding him first. You're asking to be murdered. Chooses to take, I will accept. This is by far the cutest animal you've never heard of, but that is going to change. This rabbit that looks like it should be teaching a jack black panda kung fu is actually a mountain viscacha. And despite that joke, they're not even related to rabbits, they're close cousins with a chinchilla. This sensei mm. rodent can live in mountains as high as 16,000 feet above sea level. That's but that's not a sensei rabbit, though, is it? Sickness, but viscachas are built different. They don't need to drink water, they get all the moisture they need from the plants they eat. During mating season, they, they look, look like they know some stuff too, don't they? To prove to anyone watching that they are not afraid of hell. This toxic masculinity is why most Viscacha groups have way more females than males. After mating, the female is pregnant for 150 days and usually gives birth to twins. And to be honest, the only reason I'm telling you that is because I really just wanted to show you this picture. <laughs> they spend most of their days sunbathing and posing for GQ. <laughs> well, it's like they know some secrets to life. Like they like they've come to they've reached Nirvana. 
they've come to peace. <laughs> I'm telling you that's because I really just wanted to show you this picture. Mm. They spend most of their days sunbathing and posing for GQ, but since GQ doesn't have the balls to make the climb to see them, most of this photogenic talent goes unnoticed. If you go to Machu Picchu really early in the morning, those long-tailed rabbits running around are actually biscotches just waking up. They don't speak English, but if they did, I would ask him for advice regarding every aspect of my life because he just looks like he has all the answers. He looks like he knows a thing or two because he's seen a thing or two. Animals mm. that I desperately want to show affection but can't do to safety reasons and societal standards. Male platypus have a venomous fur capable of causing severe yeah, pain. The spike on her legs told me the price of showing this adorable duck rabbit affection is a season's worth of agony i'll reserve my hospital bed right the hell now mm. incapacitating venom induced misery might be temporary but being able to say a hell of platypus is something nobody can ever take from me bears are the largest land predators on the planet but if nature wanted me to fear them as such they should have given those ears and that nose to somebody else because all i see is an <laughs> overgrown forest that demands attention that snoot will be booped and whatever consequences the mother has planned for me i will live with <laughs> actually probably not but we're all gonna die regardless i am going to live out this picture if it kills me the problem is it uh, i know him will. I don't trust myself. Uh, I don't know his name, but I've seen his videos a lot. Uh, he takes care of bears. Um, I don't know. I don't know if he is like in a sanctuary as well. Um, I know he takes care of bears though, and he has some gigantic bears, and he has like videos of himself like feeding them and playing with them. There was this one video where a bear was like balancing on his back, like this bear was like trying to wrestle with him, and he's like sitting on his log, and he's like. The bear's like on his back and he's like going like the and the bear's like literally trying to like climb up him so it can like stand on his back. And I'm like, this dude gotta be like in his sixties. And you have this bear that has to be at least every bit of two hundred and fifty pounds trying to climb on his back and the dude is like just kinda like halfway letting him. I mean, it's a bear, you kinda have to let it. <laughs> but I mean, the dude either has a spine of steel or a spine of a damn uh uh butterscotch what the hell is that stuff called i was trying to i was trying to make a reference but i i i, I bungled it but um yeah peanut brittle that's what i was thinking of peanut brittle i'm tripping he has a spine of peanut brittle i am going to live out this picture if it kills me the problem is it almost most certainly will i don't trust myself around honey badgers because it is an undeniable fact that i will pick him up like a lap dog and let him decide what he wants to do about it oh, no. I am it looks like a skunk the exploits of this felony weasel but put me in a room with a honey badger i'm either gaining a friend or losing a hand and that is a gamble i am willing to take mm. i will cuddle a honey badger if it's the last thing i do but due to the nature of this furry black air force it probably will be they have a reputation but i have mirror lex we'll see who really doesn't give us yeah 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 that you can expect that you're going to be in a situation where you're going to be <laughs> i was about to say something else but let's try to keep it clean um yeah i mean th these types of videos have a lot of different information in them um the, all the videos aren't like this it's not all just wholesome videos this just happens to be one video he did on wholesome stuff trust me it gets savage very quickly if you watch his other videos um I will probably do reactions to more videos in the future because, uh, I mean, like I said, you learn stuff from watching these and it's also entertaining, which is something I enjoy. Now I'll probably end up doing reactions to, um, uh, what is it called? Uh, a daily dose of internet, more of those videos. Cause I did do, I think at least one in the past and I will do more of those. So more stuff that we can watch and learn together. And also, just a quick heads up. I haven't announced this yet, but this is going to be the first time I announce this. Um, I'm going to be doing a live reaction to the upcoming Adik the Ones Try Not to Laugh Challenge. I believe it's number 46. I'm going to be doing that, and that is going to be on Patreon. So, I mean, the, the video itself isn't going to be on Patreon. The live reaction is going to be on Patreon. The next day, I'll release the video onto YouTube as just a regular video. But if you do want to be a part of the live reaction and join the chat and uh, participate with me, because you better believe if I'm trying not to laugh, then the chat is trying not to laugh, too. Um, be sure to uh, check out my Patreon. It's only a dollar. Uh, it, I have exclusive TV shows, exclusive movies. Up until now, all of my videos have been DaVinci Watch style videos. Um, for those of you that don't know what that is, that means that the video in the corner is like edited. So you have to use a secondary source to like watch two videos at the same time, my reaction and the video I'm reacting to on separate things. Um, 
it's really just to, to avoid copyright and legal issues. But I think for TV shows, I'm going to be changing that around. I'm going to be start doing uh, reacts versions of videos. And right now I am reacting to Only Fools and Horses. So if you do want to check that out, you can also join my Patreon. And I'm going to be doing some movie reaction, or I've already done a lot of movie reactions, but I will be jumping into another movie reaction. And the upcoming movie that I'm going to be reacting to is... I'm thinking it's going to be the new Candyman movie because that is a fear that I have to overcome. Now I'm kind of past it, but it's still there. <laughs> like, let's just say I wouldn't voluntarily get in front of a mirror and say the guy's name unless I have to. <laughs> and I don't know why I would do that. So I don't see myself doing it. <laughs> so there's still that, but I would like to see the new um, remake by Jordan Peele. So if you want to check that out, Again, like I said, join my Patreon and those videos will be coming out. Um, but until then, that's been this video. I, I enjoyed it. I learned some new stuff. Uh, I was able to, uh, I guess, add some stuff maybe. Uh, there were some things that I knew, but some things that I was speculating on. So if I happen to say something that was wrong in this video, please feel free to go in the comment section and let me know because, I mean, the only way you really do learn something. Uh, but anyway... I'm going to go ahead and give you guys the deuces. I look forward to seeing you guys on a future video. And until then, I'm Devon Da Vinci. Hopefully you've been enlightened. And I'll see you all next time. Peace.